The Bob Hope Show, a special rebroadcast for the American Armed Forces and their allies with Jerry Colonna, Vera Vig, Francis Langford, Stan Kenton's Orchestra, and Bob Hope. Join up. Well, here I am with a thousand beautiful waves. You know what a wave is? That's a sailor with a flirtation walk. You know that walk the sailors have where they roll from the shoulders? Well, the waves have the same walk with a follow through. The waves here are really pretty, though. In fact, they don't have to take a back seat for Betty Grable, but they don't mind it if there's a sailor in it. <laughs> and every girl here is trained to replace a man. The one I was out with in Miami last night must have been training to replace Boris Karloff. <laughs> I found out she was an instructor. She must have been. She knew all the answers. <laughs> and they tell me they used to have a woman bugler here, but they have to cut it out. Every time she puckered, 20 naval aviators came in on the beam. <laughs> Did you all play the bugle? <laughs> and a lot of these waves cut their hair real short. At a distance, they're like a man. When you get close, they're like a woman. And if you get too close, they're like a man again. The first wave casualty of the war was reported yesterday. One of the girls bent over to tie her shoe in the doorway of the barracks, and the telephone rang. <laughs> you should see these girls make a dash uh, when the phone ring rings, when it rings. Yesterday, a soldier called and said, Hello, Mary. And the wave who answered said, You'll have to talk louder. She's on top of the pile. And now I want you to meet a man who's done a great job recruiting waves. Professor Colonna. Colonna? Oh, Professor Colonna. One minute, Hope. I'm over here signing up a new recruit. <laughs> Say, how long have you been recruiting waves, Professor? Oh, about 20 years. Oh, that's impossible. The waves are only two years old. Two years old? Yes. Yeah, big for their age, aren't they? <laughs> Well, is the Navy satisfied with your results, Colonna? Why, well, they should be. You know, I even got Gypsy Rose Lee to join. You signed up Gypsy Rose Lee. Well, do you think she'll be a good, able-bodied seaman? Yeah. You're kidding, of course. <laughs> ah, but the, but the waves are attracting a lot of interest, Hope. The other day, Frank Sinatra came down to look over the recruiting office. What happened? Nothing. He couldn't pass the physical. That's really too bad, because Crosby could have used the allotment. <laughs> Say, who else have you signed up, Colonna? Well, my father. He just tried to join the waves. Your father tried to join the waves? That's ridiculous. If your father joined the waves, then that means that he's the only man in the waves area. Wonderful setup, isn't it? <laughs> I don't blame you for liking these waves, Professor. They certainly have a sparkle in their eye, don't they? Well, they're pretty excited. You know, Hope, it isn't every day they catch a couple of pee-pee toms looking into their barracks. It isn't? <laughs> That's only the straight line, you know. <laughs> it isn't every day, huh? No, I guess we just had hard luck. Colonna, are you accusing me of being a peeping Tom? Uh, of course not, Hope. You're, you're no peeping Tom. You're more of a squinting Harry. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Colonna, did you ever hear strange voices and feel as though you're being hurled through space? Yes. A lot of fun parking in Oriental Gardens, ain't it? <laughs> Colonna, you know, you have a head like an imbecile. Well, that's convenient. Then we can wear each other's hat. <laughs> Colonna, 
Did you really go out for a, with a wave? Yes, Hope, I, and I asked her for a kiss. You asked a wave for a kiss? Yes. Now, you know the slogan, the Navy comes through? Yes. It's a lie. <laughs> and here's Fast, his last and boyfriend, right here. Dust and geese better scurry when you take me out in the surrey. When you take me out in the surrey with a friend on top. Watch that fringe and see how it flutters when I drive them high step and strutters. Nosy pokes will peek through their shutters and their eyes will pop. The wheels are yellow, the upholstery is brown, the dashboard genuine leather. With eyes and glass curtains, you can roll right down in case there's a change in the weather. Two bright side lights winking and blinking, ain't no finer rig I'm a thinking. You can keep your rig if you're thinking at a chair to swap. For that shiny, shiny little surrey with a fringe on the top. Gee, Robert, it's wonderful riding home in the moonlight like this. Yes, well. Robert, stop breathing in my ear. I will in a minute. I think I got a fly trapped in there. <laughs> Robert. Yeah, Francie. Robert, my mother and father gave me permission to get married. What do you say? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> you know. My ma says if a girl got less than 16 petticoats, she ain't decent, and I shouldn't have any dates with her. How many you wearing? Oh, Robert, I'm sorry. I'm only wearing 12. Want to go steady? <laughs> Say, you go out with a lot of girls, don't you? Yep, I'm the local swan. No, you mean swain. A swan is something that's noted for its long neck. I'm the local swan. <laughs> You look nice tonight. What you got on your hair? Peanut butter. <laughs> Gee, why do you put peanut butter on your hair? Oh, it comes in handy in case I feel like a sandwich. <laughs> Gee, and that's a nice suit you're wearing, too. Yeah, my mom made it. Made it out of one of her old dresses. Well, why is it so tight? Ma's still in it. <laughs> How are things over at the farm, Robert? Mighty cold. What makes you think things are so cold? Well, I spent three hours milking a cow this morning and then found out it was just a horse with goose pimples. <laughs> what happened to your cow, Bossy? Oh, we're having a lot of trouble with Bossy, Fancy. <laughs> she's got too much iron in her blood. She's got too much iron in her blood? Yeah, she's the only cow we ever had who can give milk and make her own pail at the same time. <laughs> Robert. Oh, Robert. Yeah, Francie. You want to kiss me? What for? My lips ain't chapped. <laughs> well, I don't think you've ever kissed a girl. Sure, kissed one last night. And did you kiss hard? See my two front teeth? <laughs> no. That'll give you an idea. <laughs> but you won't get me. <laughs> Can't talk with two front teeth in this one. But she won't go out with me anymore. Why not? She says I got too fresh. You got too fresh? Yeah, we were sitting in the back of the buggy, and you know what I did? <laughs> what? <laughs> Snap my suspenders at her. <laughs> oh, but I didn't like her anyhow. She was too countrified for me. What makes you think that? She snapped her suspenders right back at me. <laughs> Gee, Robert, let's go someplace and have some fun. Okay, but let's do something different. Let's do something exciting. Something gay. Let's get down to the corner drugstore. No, let's park for a while. Okay. Gee, isn't that a beautiful Florida moon? Yeah. Yeah, is that the same moon they got in California? <laughs> yes, Robert. No matter where you are, you see the same moon. But you're smart, Robert. Yep, in school I always got 100%. You must have had something on the ball. No, I'll pass something on the teacher. <laughs> Gee, honey, I'm crazy about you. You're so nice and cuddly, I could neck with you all night. Gee. Robert, put away that rabbit and pay some attention to me. <laughs> from 
me anymore, Robert. Why not? You've been going out with waves. Well, what makes you think I've been going out with waves? Well, you've got lipstick on your collar, and it's shaped like an anchor. <laughs> Don't you think I'm as cute as the wave? Well, you got nice dimples. Dimples? What's a dimple? That's a pucker that went AWL. <laughs> oh, we've been riding a long time, Franny. Better stop at this horse trough. <laughs> My, Robert, you sure were thirsty. <laughs> Still, a lark will wake up in the meadow. Hush, you bird, my baby's asleep. Maybe got a dream worth a keeping. Oh, you team, just keep a creeping at a slow clip clop. Don't you hurry, hurry with, with a surrey with a friend on the This is a lovely evening. Come on, Tony, boy. This is a lovely way to spend an evening. Can think of anything I'd rather do. have had a wonderful time here with the waves at Jacksonville Naval Air Station. And now before Bob leaves the lovely state of Florida, he decides to look around for something to take back and show the folks in California. Hiya, babe. He keeps looking. <laughs> yes, it has been a great visit, but while this state is really a tropical paradise, there are some things in Florida that are definitely on the fantastic side. Yeah, Mr. Hall! Well, it's very Have you seen our audience, Miss Vague, this week? They're all girls. Yes, nice breathing spell, isn't it? 
<laughs> Miss Vague, have you seen some of the sights in Jacksonville? Oh, yes, Miss Philip. I spent all day yesterday on the sightseeing bus. Well, did you go very far? Uh, no. The driver kept pushing me off his lap. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. You have quite a glint in your eye tonight, Miss Vague. Oh. You've been doing very well down here, haven't you? Oh, wonderfully, Mr. Hope. I was out myself on the beach last week, and a handsome naval aviator came over and buried me in the sand. <laughs> well, that sounds very romantic. Did he try to see you again? Uh, no, no. I waited three or four days. Nothing happened, so I finally dug my way out. Well, Miss Vega, I bet you think of men 365 days of the year. Oh, no, Mr. Hope. This is leap year, 366. <laughs> well, Miss Vega, look, when you're out with one of these native Florida men, how do you get him to kiss you? Oh, I don't know. I just snuggle up on his shoulder and say, whack a smacker on me, cracker. <laughs> getting to be a regular cracker myself, aren't I? <laughs> you look like the whole barrel. Bless <laughs> your heart, Peninsula yeah. Puss. Oh. You know, that was such a lovely gesture to Florida you made when you arrived, draining the water on your brain and putting an orange juice. <laughs> Mr. Hope, come yeah, here. Uh -huh. Will you tell me, is there really a fountain of youth here in Florida? Oh, of course. Why, when you went to school, didn't you read your history? I know. There was a handsome boy in the next seat, and I was too busy making it. <laughs> well, how would you like to find the fountain of youth, Miss Vague? Uh, well, I tell you, it wouldn't be very difficult. I went out looking for it this morning, and the people around here told me what path to follow. They made me so mad. Well, how could they make you mad, Miss Vake, telling you how to get to the fountain of youth? Well, they pointed to it before I asked them anything. <laughs> I think the whole thing's a lot of nonsense. Oh, Mr. It, it isn't, Miss Vake. Why, only last week my grandmother drank a glass of water out of the fountain of youth. Well, did it make her young? Well, I don't know if it made her young or not, but this morning my grandfather sued for a divorce and named Henry Aldrich as correspondent. <laughs> Try it, Mr. Hope. Do you think it'll bring back all my curves? Miss Vague, this is the fountain of youth, not the miracle of Morgan's Creek. <laughs> you know, perhaps I ought to try some of that water from the fountain of youth. <laughs> For curiosity, of course. <laughs> well, they broadcast on the radio every day. Let's turn it on and find out how to get there. All right. On today, Leon Colonna's fountain of youth is on the air. Waze, do you want to stay young? <laughs> Do you want to live longer? Do you want to keep healthy? Well, here's the professor to tell you how to do it. Stay off the Jacksonville bus. Oh, nothing like a good local, is there? Huh? Girls, are you married to some rich guy who's too old for you? Well, give him one drink of this water. <laughs> we'll split the insurance. <laughs> Remember, folks, rush right down here to the fountain of youth. Only a small fee per glass, and if it makes you too young, don't worry. We furnish transportation home and free diapers. <laughs> now, here's how to get there, folks. Take Route 23 and go out one mile. Then turn right, then left, right, left, right, left. What do you know? I've been drafted. <laughs> Let's go to the fountain of you. All right, but it's way out in the middle of the Florida swamps. Say, just what is a Florida swamp? Well, that's where the California rain spends the winter. <laughs> oh, goodness, it's a long way through this swamp, Mr. Hope. Do you want to change places and let me row for a while? Oh, I, w I wouldn't think of it, Miss Vague. The gentleman always does the rowing. All right, but I'm getting awfully tired swimming ahead with this rope in my teeth. Running through the swamp. Chloe, Chloe, come on, Chloe, I ain't got time to fool around. Well, who's that? That's a sailor with a four-hour liberty pass. You'll find time to fool around. Oh, here, here we are, Mr. Hope. There's the fountain of you. Yeah, 
Yeah, there it is. Look, there's Professor oh, Kloder. Oh, Step right up, folks, and get some youth giving water from the fountain of youth. Is this good stuff, Kloder? Of course. Hope it's great stuff. One drink and you rave for a wave. Well, what happens if I take two drinks? You act like a petty officer. I drink this water myself, Hope, and now I'm in perfect physical condition. In fact, I can touch my toes without bending over. You can touch your toes without bending over? How is that? Keep forgetting to cut my fingernail. Kelowna, why were you ever born anyway? You no, know, I guess the stock was behind in this quarter. Professor, they say you look a year younger for every cup of this water you drink. Now, how much would you prescribe for me? Miss Vague, to save both time and your time, may I suggest the fire hose? <laughs> Vague, here's the fountain of youth. Are you going to drink? Oh, Professor, do you think it'll make me young enough so I can join the wave? Why, certainly. Just take a drink from the well. That's it. Lean over and you can see the water way down there. Oh, this will be wonderful. I do so want to join the wave. Yes, well, now lean over a little further. Just a little further. <laughs> <laughs> she joined them. especially for you soldiers, sailors, marines, and coast guardsmen of the United Nations. Now, Stan Kenton, Bob's music master, steps up baton in hand to lead his orchestra in a musical after show. Okay, Stan, take over. Thank you. 
This rebroadcast is a presentation of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Yeah.